Let's bring in another voice, Rich Greenfield of Lightshed Partners, who put out some tweet <clears throat> with a gif of like a skeleton hand coming out of a grave. Mm. Streaming is alive. What the heck did you mean by that, Rich? Well, I think the market has essentially assumed that after the slowdown at Netflix, some of the challenges that have faced Disney's, you know, subscriber ads and other companies, they essentially assumed this category was dead and they've sort of moved on that this business, I've heard so many people say, oh, this is a business that's mature, 200 plus million subs, that's the top, that's it. And I think what we are clearly seeing uh, tonight is that investors are shifting back to, oh my God, there actually is growth here. More of it may, there may be more revenue growth than just purely <laughs> subscriber growth over the course of the next couple of years. But there is healthy growth ahead. I think if you look forward to next year, now you can start to paint a picture why Netflix can grow revenue in the low to mid teens, which I don't think a couple of months ago people really thought was possible. And I think that's where it gets very exciting is thinking about 2023 and 2024. And the company just seems energized. You read the letter today and they're coming out swinging, like attacking, like yeah. binging makes sense. Theaters is not the right strategy. Like they're on the offensive for the first time in but probably how, six Rich, to nine months. Rich, they've got some hit shows. And I just, and I'm, first off, the stock's down 400 bucks a share from its peak of last year. So let's not paint it as everything sure. is all fantastic. They've got Dahmer and they've got The Watcher. They've got some shows that are getting a lot of buzz. And this stock seems to come and go based on consumer trends around a show, if they have a bust in six months, then what's gonna happen? How sustainable, I guess, is the momentum is the question, because it seems to rise and fall based on just, is anybody talking about a specific show or not? Well, I think the cadence of big successful shows is certainly increasing. If you look at the last few months, there has certainly been more consistent success than there was in the six months prior. So I think that's part of the reason. I also think, there's starting to be a pullback. Like you're starting to see retrenchment from others. I don't think the, the, the aggressive level of spending and marketing, you've got companies that are losing two to $3 billion trying to compete with Netflix. And I think a lot of them are starting to think of like, is this the best strategy? Can you win in streaming? And if they can't, maybe they should go back and be more arms dealers. And I think each of them, a lot of the major media companies are starting to think that. And so, Part of this is I think competition may lessen a little bit as you move into 2023. That's going to be another catalyst. But again, Brian, the thing I would focus on is overall time spent. If you think about connected TVs, Netflix represents <laughs> almost 30% of time spent on a connected TV. YouTube is in the low 20s. Nobody else is even close. So yes, the big high profile hits come and go, but the overall amount of engagement dwarfs everybody else. So, so Rich, it's Tim, and, and we don't need to discuss the secular reasons behind streaming, and so I agree, and suddenly we have to defend that, no way, but, but and you talk about the engagement, what can Netflix do to monetize? I, I've read your notes, and, and part of yep. this is for someone with this kind of engagement, how do they get their ARPU up? That, to me, really is the story right now. Look, there's 20 to 30 million people, they'll say 30, but let's just say there's 20 million people who have Netflix every single day and use it every day, and don't pay for it because they're mooching off of somebody else. That's gonna to start to get monetized either through people paying for password shares yep. and or through shifting people to ad plans. And I don't, you know, I was listening to you earlier on the show. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of cannibalization dropping down from 1699 or 1599 where you have multiple accounts and the ability to download and no ads, dropping down to 699 where you have one stream, non HD, not even all the programming. I think that's going to be a very tough sell in terms of the downgrade. I don't think there's a lot of downgrade risk. I think this is about opening up the market for the people that are not Netflix subscribers right now or are not yeah. their own Netflix subscribers and they're mooching off of somebody else. And then that, not just in the U.S., it's also a really big issue in Latin America where the password sharing is actually more rampant than it is in the U.S. They have huge password sharing outside the U.S. Yeah, I do I do wonder with that 720p, and I'm talking about, you know, sort of the the – the way that it's broadcast, they seem to be going down market with that ad tier. Because if you've got a 65 inch flat panel, you don't want to watch 720. Everything's going to look like Tecmo Bowl. Sure, but Brian, remember, they're at 67 million US members. So think about the households from 67 to 100 plus. How do you get there? What does that home look like? You know, some of the people are clearly sharing, but there's certainly a group of those homes that are lower income can afford yeah. it, but can't afford $9.99 or can't afford $16.99. So I think part of this is opening up more of the market. 
I think the single biggest thing that investors are not paying attention to and should who are watching your show right now, Netflix is going to start an ad campaign in two weeks. They're going to market Netflix is at a lower price than it's ever been in its history. You've never seen Netflix streaming at $6.99. They're going to be the first ever price-based ad campaign for Netflix starting in November for the new ad service. They're clearly going after yeah. a lower-end demographic that has never been a Netflix sub consistently in the past. Yep. We'll see if it works. Rich Greenfield, Lightshed Partners. Rich, thank you very much. Thanks Dan, are you concerned me. at all about the fact that they're not going to – this was the last quarter, I think, that they're going to provide any update on paying subscribers. Kind of tucked in there, Julia Borston mentioned it, that they're going to focus on revenue. We may not ever hear again about subscriber numbers. Is that yeah, really? and that, that's probably not a bad thing. I, I think it might decrease the sort of volatility that we see around quarters. We just talked about how volatile this stock has been from year to year over the last, I don't know, as far, long as we've been covering it. So that might be a good thing, getting investors a bit more comfortable with, um, you know, just some different metrics that l lend themselves to less volatility. You know, when I, when I listen to Rich talk about that, and you talk about if he's not that worried about cannibalization, he thinks that the potential to kind of onboard a bunch of new subscribers at the lowest price point. That makes sense to me. And it also makes sense that if you get this patchwork sharing thing under control, that maybe that does help margins. But it also leads me to believe that maybe these guys want to compete on their platform. They want to broaden out horizontally. I think about a company like Spotify. I don't own it, but I've really thought about kicking the tires and thinking about potential strategic M&A. It's a $15 billion enterprise company that has 25% gross margins, where a Netflix has 40. Now, I get it. They lose money on a huh. gap basis, and that would be dilutive. But that is how I would look to broaden this out and really kind of like ramp margins on an adjacent product and, and just have a better offering in general. And you kind of muddle the numbers, too, with a deal. It gives you a couple of years of maybe some runway. Tim, comment on Netflix before we swap to Apple? Well, I, again, I just think they haven't even begun to monetize the password sharing. Rich got to that. I think you, you lower the bar here. I don't believe in cannibalism. I also believe there was a long time we talked about their, their content. Uh, if anything, I think the content will win out, and I think this is why the stock goes higher.